know that you love a good update if you watch this show and we have got a great update for you right now. One year ago, almost to the day, we introduced you to Mr. Eicheldinger. The West Metro teacher went viral for his metaphors, explaining the lessons, not academic lessons, but life lessons that unfold in the classroom. One of the lessons he was learning while feverishly trying to get his own children's book published is this. Over those 15 years, I received hundreds of rejections. I kept all of them. And, but I include those students in on that entire conversation of, I just sent this to a really famous agent. Now we have to wait three months. And then they're asking for three months, did you get that email yet? Did you get the email yet? And then finally I can be like, I got the email. It was a big no. And then they're disappointed with me, but then they immediately ask like, well, what are you gonna do next? And that's where I get to show them, you know, some resiliency and uh, persistence. Well, as you are about to see, his persistence paid off. This is it, there they are. For Matt Eicheldinger, this is a dream realized. At Big Hill Books in Bryn Mawr and across the continent, his book is on the shelves. I've been drawing that character since I was like in third grade. That's me as a kid. Mr. Ike, as he's called, has been doodling for decades. When he became a teacher in YZ, he took the craft into his classroom, turning every student into a character. At 21, he wrote and illustrated his first book. I mean, I think a big part of this story is the rejection that came before yeah. the success. Yeah, uh, the stories of rejection has definitely um, helped me persevere in, in different aspects of this industry because you know, you write your book, you think everyone's gonna buy it, and then the reality is your book is out there with thousands and thousands of books that are put out each week. After hundreds of rejections, his book got picked up by Andrews McNeil Publishing, who publishes his own childhood favorite, Calvin and Hobbes. Matt, a father of two, who had quit his teaching job to follow his dream of writing, waited in great anticipation as his book hit store shelves. Was there a moment when you saw a book somewhere and you were like, cool? I saw a kid buy my book with his parent and that was like, oh, it actually does happen. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't just sit here. Turns out many of his books didn't just sit there as the phone call of a lifetime would soon reveal. So I was in, the, in my bedroom, I think I was in my PJs and my editor called. He and his wife put the phone on speaker as his editor announced he was a New York Times bestseller. We both cried a lot because the point of pride was I did it. I got my book on a shelf and that was my goal the whole time. So to suddenly uh, spike up to New York Times bestseller, it still feels very surreal, and very odd. But he's adjusted to his new norm. He has a second book. He's been asked to speak with students and teachers around the country. It seems that his books about the challenges and joys of being a kid are resonating. There's a family that sends me their read aloud videos every night, which is really enjoyable to see like the father make the voices of the characters in the book. And that stuff doesn't get old ever because then it's that's tangible. I've gotten fan mail. I actually had to make a P.O. box. So um, with the last name Eicheldinger, it was pretty easy to find my yeah, home address. You're very Googleable. <laughs> very I think that's how I found it. Yes, yeah. very Googleable. It's a reality. He's still absorbing. Sometimes when you write the ideas that live in your own head, you don't know they'll resonate with anybody else. And then you actually get to talk to a human being who enjoys your work. And I'm sure it's the same thing with a musician or a potter when you see someone use your product. It's just very surreal that anyone would want what you've created. Well, they do want it. Now, he's completed a third book. Uh, sticky notes, memorable lessons from ordinary moments. This one's for adults, insights he's learned from teaching. Years ago, I had a student who wouldn't speak. And when I say wouldn't speak, I mean not at all not one word. I've never felt so ill-equipped as a teacher. I had no tools for this situation. So as a way to connect with her, I just drew a cartoon or wrote a little message on a sticky note and placed it on her desk every single day. Two years go by and I get an envelope in the mail. What's inside? A single sticky note. On it, it said, I saved all your sticky notes. Thank you so much. You helped me more than you know. Most of the time you never get to know your impact, but I guarantee you, whatever you're doing, even the small things, like a sticky note, have probably made a huge difference. That's right. You don't always know your impact unless you see it in writing. I still can't believe we get to plaster that on every book now. <laughs> it's, it's like, That's as yeah, good as it gets. It is as good as it gets. 
Well, Matt's first two books are for middle grade readers from third grade up. He has a book release party for his latest adult book. That's this week. The Sticky Notes book release party is happening on October 15th at the Plymouth Banquet Hall. You can find information and tickets through Matt's website, Matt eigoldinger.com. Tickets start at $5, they go to $25, or you can also get a book too. And tickets are also available at the door.